Gearbest recently sent me two Cadison watches, both of which have Miyota movements in them, and I already reviewed the first of those, of which, thanks to a reviewer, now has the nickname of the White Waffle. And this is a second, which is known as the Cadison C8100. Now, just like the White Waffle, I don't believe in its homage to any specific watch, but if I'm wrong, let me know down below in the comments. But since it isn't, I've decided to give it a nickname. So I'm calling this the Cadison Imperial. Why? I'll explain in a little bit. Now, out of those two Cadisons, this one is by far my favorite. And I actually wanted to review it first. But right as I was about to start filming, I noticed the price had jumped from $80 to $180. Which is pretty much just crazy talk for this watch. So I put it off hoping the price would drop back down. And I noticed about a week ago that it had dropped to $90 which is still maybe a little high for what you're getting, but overall I think is pretty fair. Now what I like about this Cadison is not only does it have a unique interesting look, but it wears nice and most importantly actually has decent loom, which for a lower end watch from China is actually amazing. Now I'd classify the Imperial as a sport watch, which comes in two versions, a white and a black one. The white version, which looks like Stormtrooper white, doesn't really do anything for me. In fact, with the see-through section, it almost looks too white. But for some reason, I was instantly attracted to the black dial version. Now the case is a rather simple design. It has a brushed finishing on the top and a polished look underneath near the case back. It's a very rounded design, which is also rather minimal, which draws your eyes and focus to the dial. When you pick it up, you instantly notice it has a decent weight to it, sitting about 139 grams. Now it's listed as being 42 millimeters wide, but I found it closer to 41. And it's also 44 and a half millimeters wide with the crown. Lug to lug is just over 49, which overall gives it a very average footprint. And that continues with a thickness of 11.4. So it's not too thick, but not exceptionally thin either. Lug width is 20 millimeters, so plenty of strap options out there. And unfortunately, it only has 50 meters of water resistance, which isn't bad, but I prefer 100 for an everyday watch. Now the finishing is a mixed bag. Looking down on the watch, everything you see is nicely finished, but underneath it's a little less refined and much sharper angles. And there are two minor quality issues, which you may or may not be able to see with the camera. The first is that the rotor has a couple small smudges on it, like someone forgot to wear gloves while installing it, which doesn't affect the watch itself, but it is minorly annoying. And along the same lines, there is a small discoloration on the steel on the case back. Which brings up a point I've made before on some of these Chinese brands. And that's that quality control is sometimes non-existent. Now most of the time you won't have a problem, but every once in a while you will. Sometimes it's going to be something minor, and other times it's going to be something more serious. Now Gearbest and AliExpress do have systems in place to help you get your money back when it's more serious. But it's just something you need to be aware of, that there's always going to be you know, just a little bit of a gamble when ordering from them. The crown is at the usual three, and it is signed with the Cadison logo. Overall, it's a decent size and shape, but I do wish it was just a little bit wider. The flat crystal on top is listed as sapphire, but while it passed a water drop test, the crystal on the back did not. So I assume the crystal in the case back is mineral. Not a huge deal, as I don't think your wrist could tell the difference, but it is a little annoying. Now underneath that crystal, you have a rather unique dial design. And the reason I've nicknamed it the Imperial is that part of the dial design, well, just reminds me of the Imperial crest from Star Wars. Once I saw the connection, that's pretty much all my brain can see now. Anyways, the dial design here is rather complex, especially when you compare it to other Cadisons, which is why I assume the price is just a little higher. So let's start by working our way out from the center. Overall, the dial is a flat black with a center section that's slightly sunk. 
and it's more of a rounded medallion there, with circular grooves emanating out, almost reminiscent of a vinyl record. A wall surrounds the medallion, and it rises to the main level of the dial, and a date wheel moat, shall we say, surrounds that, which has little bridges that go across it. Now that date wheel moat is at the very lowest point of the dial, and it's really just a see-through plastic. The dial then rises back up to the outer edges, which has applied our indicators, which have a greenish loom coloring to them and a silver outline, with the 12, 3, 6, and 9 as Arabic numerals. But in between those indicators are again cutouts, which slope down from the main level all the way to the lowest level of the dial. They also have circular etchings just as a center medallion, which almost make them look like individual little staircases going up from the date wheel. Beyond that, you have a very detailed raised chapter ring, which rises to meet the crystal. Now one thing I do love here is the use of colors. The minute indicators here that correspond to the Arabic numerals are in red, which match the second hand and the phrase automatic, as well as a little indicator for the cutout of the date which means the overall colors used here are primarily black, followed by a little bit of green, and just a touch of red, which makes this watch perfect to match with the classic Bond NATO. Now let's talk about the hands before we go to the date wheel. They are silver colored sword shaped. Overall, they look good, and I like the width of them, but I think they are just a little short, and they really should have tried to use the same loom paint as the hour indicators, as these are more white than green. But the second hand I really do like, and I think it's a great length. And I already mentioned how I love the red color. Overall, I really like the layout here. It's different. It has an interesting depth and complexity you don't see very often, especially at this price. Now, a lot of people are gonna have an issue with the, uh, the date mode or date cutout on this watch. Kind of like an open date window, some people just can't stand them. Now, it's not really an open date window. It's more like a see-through date window. For me, I really just don't mind it. But I do wonder if there is a better way that they could have done this. Now, if they had used a solid piece of plastic, I think the dial would have looked much cleaner. But I think it would have lost some of its depth and complexity. They could have also used a black date wheel with white text instead of the white date wheel. But when I look at the white version of this watch, it does look a bit more bland to me. Ultimately, it's either going to be something you're able to accept or just hate about this watch. So let's talk about Loom. And as I said, it's actually decent. And just decent. Initially, it's better than a Vostok Amphibia. And I'd say it's pretty close to being on par with the Citizen Chronograph I recently reviewed. But it doesn't last quite as long. While the loom on the dial will last into the night, the hands start to get a little dim, but it's kind of what you'd expect with that small loom strip. And I think it goes without saying that it's nowhere near as good as a Seiko or an Orient Diver, but it is by far the best loom I've gotten on a lower end Chinese watch. Now movement wise, it uses a Japanese Miyoto 8200 series. So hand winding, but no hacking. 40-ish hour power reserve, and a standard beat rate. And like all Miotas, the rotor is a little loud. Now, accuracy is always the luck of the draw with automatics. And this is the third Cadison I've gotten with a Miyota movement in it. And it's also the third that really doesn't disappoint when it comes to accuracy. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, this one would gain or lose around a second a day. But after a month, it actually averaged out to zero seconds a day, at least according to the watch check app. Although if I did the math myself, it more comes out to 0.04 seconds a day, which is outstanding any way you look at it. Now the C8100 comes with a stainless bracelet, and it might be the best bracelet I've gotten from Gearbest. It's a mixture of brushed and polished steel, and overall, I really like the look of it with the watch. Although, there is something just a little off about it as it meets the case. Just maybe a little smaller than the lugs themselves. It has a signed butterfly clasp, 
and I really like how they separated out the name and the logo on either side of that clasp. By itself, it's actually pretty decent, and it's much, much better than what came with the white waffle. Its finishing is nice, and overall feels very comfortable against my wrist. But the finishing of the bracelet itself is a little bit of a weak point. The finishing itself is actually pretty decent, but the edges are a little sharp as you run your fingers across them, as well as a middle section where there's a small ledge where the brushed and polished sections meet. The edges aren't bad or really uncomfortable, but you do feel them as you put the bracelet on and off. Otherwise, the bracelet and watch itself are rather comfortable to wear. In fact, this is the only Chinese watch I've worn that I primarily wore on the stock bracelet. I actually didn't even change it out till I started filming this. The watch and bracelet conform very nicely to my wrist, and I'd say it's the perfect lug length for my 7 inch wrist. It goes right to the edge, but not quite over, setting up almost a perfect position for the bracelet to extend out. Overall, I really like this watch, and it's grown on me over the last month. When I first saw it, I was a little skeptical, and at the time, there were no reviews of it out there. And one thing that really surprised me while filming this was that no matter what strap I put on it, the watch simply looked brilliant. Now the tricky thing with this Cadison is value. In fact, value is always tricky with these watches, as the price can really fluctuate a lot. Right now it's sitting at about 90, but who knows what it'll be next month. But let's look at another popular Cadison watch, which is the Conquest Homage, which does frequently go on sale, but usually sits around 60. Both watches share the same movement, but I'd say the C8100 has a better case, better loom, and better bracelet, not to mention a much more complicated and intricate dial. So I think it should be priced higher than the Conquest. When a reviewer has provided a watch, a question I think they should ask themselves, if not directly address those watching, is whether or not they'd actually spend their own money on that product. And in this case, the answer is definitive yes. While the Cadison Imperial is a little rough around the edges, literally, overall it's a good little package and one that I think most people would be happy with. And as long as they don't quietly change something like they did with the Naxxon Pagoda, it's a watch I would recommend. Now I do wish the price was just a little bit lower, but overall I think $80 to $90 is probably pretty fair for what you're getting. But it could be something to watch for if it ever goes on sale. But in the meantime, let me know what you think about the Cadison Imperial, and especially its cutout see-through date moat wheel thing. Do you love it, hate it, or just plain ignoring it? And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.